Okay. Um, Dr. Fox. Yeah. Thank you, Mr. Chairman, and I thank our witnesses. Uh, Mr. O'Brien, one of DHS's core values is to, quote, relentlessly identify and deter threats that pose a danger to the safety of the American people, end quote. However, since January 2021, the Biden administration has released nearly 3.5 million people into the United States and is threatening to release thousands more for purely political reasons. In your opinion, is it possible thoroughly to vet people who may pose a threat to the United States when more than one million people are being released into the country on an annual basis? No, it's not possible to, at all. I actually ran the vetting program at U.S. Citizenship and Immigration Services. Uh, none of the agencies have the capacity to vet people in those numbers. But even more importantly, vetting is something that happens because people have a background that can be traced. In the United States, from the time we're born until the time we die, we're laying down a paper trail of transactions. We apply for driver's licenses. Uh, we make bank transactions. All of those things can be used to substantiate somebody's identity. When you're talking about people coming from rural villages in Guatemala or places like Yemen, there aren't any records like that. And in a lot of cases, even when records exist in places like Iran, the governments in those countries don't give us access to them. So I would estimate that something along the lines of 90 to 95 percent of the people that have come in in this wave of migrants are totally unvettable. We have no reasonable way of determining who they are or what their intentions are. Thank you. Another question, Mr. O'Brien. The Biden administration established policies for immigration and customs enforcement attorneys not to prosecute so-called, quote, non-priority, end quote, cases of illegal aliens in what is known as the Doyle Memo. That memo stated that the preferred way to handle non-priority cases is either, either non-filing of the notice to appear or if the NTA has already been filed, with the immigration court dismissal of proceedings. In FY 2023, ICE attorneys affirmatively sought and obtained, quote, 84,000 dismissals in the exercise of prosecutorial discretion, end quote. Does this guidance sound like the president and Secretary Mayorkas need new powers to enforce immigration laws at the border, or is the administration refusing to enforce laws that are already on the books? The administration is refusing to enforce laws that are already on the books. In fact, it's tripping over itself to not enforce them, uh, which is perfectly illustrated by the example that you just brought up. And the whole prosecutorial discretion thing in the civil context of immigration proceedings is a red herring. Prosecutorial discretion exists in criminal proceedings in order to ensure that a prosecutor is not forced to charge someone before it's ready before, excuse me, the case is ready to be proven or that there's no political influence. Administrative discretion is entirely different. Administrative discretion is for the convenience of the government in order to be able to do its job. It's not to allow the government to sidestep seeking the administrative remedy. Great. Well, I think you've alluded to this already in your answer to my colleague's question, but in your opinion, would H.R. 2, the Secure the Border Act, which we passed last year, help alleviate the crisis at the border? Yes, indeed it would. It has right. solid measures to reinforce the laws that are already on the books and to require compliance with the laws that are on the books. Let me ask a quick question to Ms. Vaughn. Last year in testimony before the Homeland Security Committee, you stated that President Biden inherited what many claim to be the most secure border in United States history and policies that deterred migrants from crossing illegally. I certainly agree that the Southwest border was more secure under the Trump administration than it has been under President Biden. Can you provide some examples of policies that were enforced under President Trump that the Biden administration has rolled back or eliminated? Uh, well, the first um, and most important probably in the context of the border is um, the policy to um, either detain or require that um, people seeking entry for asylum 
um, go back to Mexico to await their proceedings and wait there. If there's That's no the remain in Mexico policy. Correct. And with respect to the interior, um, the, the policy under the Trump administration was to allow immigration uh, enforcement officers to enforce the law um, and not to make exceptions for people um, because, you know, for various reasons that are under the Mayorkas policies to let them actually do their job, which, and by the way, they were overwhelmingly focused on removing criminal aliens that came to their attention because they had been arrested for a state and local crime. The Trump administration was yes. doing that. Yes. Mr. Chairman, I thank you very much for having this hearing. It is clear from our witnesses that uh, HR2 would be a very effective way of shutting down the border and that the Biden administration is undoing the policies of the Trump administration and opening the border for people. It's a terrible situation, and it's why we impeach Secretary Mayorkas. I yield back. Thank you. Quick word here from Mr. Yeah, Garcia. I just want to just seek unanimous consent. I seek unanimous consent to enter to the record an Axios article titled Funding Deadlock Threatens to Make the Border Crisis crisis worse, which highlights how House Republicans' efforts to solve border funding further exasperate issues on the southern border. And then also, I, you know, I would object to that coming in. It's, a, it's an article. It's an Axios. Hey, I, you know, if you're going to submit the article, submit it. Don't give me a filibuster on it. I, I can read it. It, it took 10 So I objected. It took 10 I seconds. Object. I object. Well, I, well, I'd like to seek unanimous consent to enter the record of the Axios article titled Funding Deadlock Threatens to Make the Border Crisis Worse. I'm okay with that. Uh, I seek unanimous consent to enter the American Immigration Council report titled 11 Years of Government Data Revealed that Immigrants Do Show Up for Court into the Record, uh, which found that a 2021 um, article, overwhelmingly 83% of immigrants show up to their immigration court hearings. Okay. Thank you. And there's somebody else you want to have wave on here? No. Uh, no, just, just listen to the record right now. Okay. We're going to, uh, so I say it just right. The committee stands in recess subject to the call of the chair. We will consult with the minority to provide adequate notice to members when we reconvene. Are they voting now? They're voting. Uh, why don't we, sh should we shoot for 210, 215? We'll, we'll, we'll consult with the minority to provide adequate notice to members of when we re reconvene. The committee stands in recess. Okay, first of all, the committee should come to order. Secondly, I'd like to submit for the record two articles by the Center for Immigration Studies, uh, one by Jessica Vaughn and one by John Fear. So, so ordered. Now, I guess the next person.